what keeps me up at night is, are we alone? In the vast expanse of space, it's possible there could be intelligent life. So if we're really looking for something where life is maybe probable, we might go somewhere that's similar to what we would find on Earth. The microbes that I study in hot springs, there are thriving in these extreme environments. And I think that understanding the ecological structure of those organisms and why they're there and what prevents other life from surviving there is paramount to understanding where life could be in space. To me, the biggest thing that there is, is that there is probably extraterrestrial life. I'm kind of blown away some days just walking down the street, being like, you guys, <laughs> there are probably aliens that come to this crazy person way, but actually I'm doing science to like address that question. So I would fall within the category of a biologist approaching the origin of life from a top-down perspective. What I do is I go to these extreme environments and I look at microbial relatives of ancient life. And then you study the biology. What were these organisms doing? How were they thriving? We're constraining variables that determine where life could easily thrive taking that thought and then extending it out to space and understand, okay, that planet is, that's unlikely. So what is dry ice? Dry ice Actually? is uh, CO2. Okay. Frozen, Frozen CO2. CO2, yeah. Okay. All right, maps? Yep, maps. So pretty much every living organism on Earth has this enormous microbial community associated with it. There's a sort of interest now in the uh, psychological community about microbiomes, et cetera, and uh, yeah, how, you know, interactions between the body and the mind, but particularly in the bottom-up direction, so body to mind, basically. Yeah. So how does the state of your stomach influence cognition. Really Absolutely. Know. I think microbes are doing a lot more than we really know about. Yeah. Here's Gerlach, which is the closest town okay. to Great it's Boiling Spring, but you can see in this entire area there's many other hot springs, just indicating that this whole region is geothermally active. So the Earth's crust sort of is this crust layer on top of everything, and then wherever there's kind of a puncture or a crack, a hole in that this. is where you get this, this connection to the subsurface world. The early Earth did not have oxygen. You know, we're talking four billion years ago when life developed on Earth. The surface of the Earth now has oxygen in it, but the subsurface doesn't. So that's a great environment to study everything that would have happened before the Earth became oxygenated. Oh, so this is it, there's fumes going out of it. Oh yeah, look at that. Right. Just quickly, we'll give you a spiel about safety. When a lot of people hear the word hot spring, they think of some something that you can get in and have a nice time in. But the hot springs that we typically associate with and study are way too hot for that. Water is one of the main things that we would look for in outer space to find the place where microbes could colonize or could have colonized in the past, like Mars, for example. In Yellowstone hot springs and other hot springs around the world, the fluids may be coming from the deep and shooting up to the surface of the Earth, or they may be in a pool that's being gassed from underneath and heating up and changing chemically. But microbes are just so happy and thriving. Just turn that on and then I'll drop the end of it in and let me know what that says. It's hot enough. Now that should slowly climb. 
But you let me right, know when it pretty quickly. maxes out. So the temperature is 72.2 Celsius. I'm interested in what the microbial community is here. So the first thing I want to do is figure out what's the temperature range and what's the pH. When we think about the origin of life and the, the organisms that currently exist that are going to be most closely related to the earliest organisms, they're going to be microorganisms that cannot survive in the presence of oxygen. Yeah, yeah. so they're there, yeah. our friends. These are sediment samples uh, taken from the edge of this hot spring, and we'll take these back on dry ice to the lab and we'll pour, perform what we call a DNA extraction to see what sort of novel, unknown microorganisms might live in this extreme environment. It's important for people to know that science is difficult. It's very difficult, but it's doable. Okay, so let's take these to the freezer. This is Olaf, our minus 80 freezer. Hello, my name is Olaf. Whether it's a DNA extraction or a DNA separation, it's really important to understand this extreme focus is so I can approach a greater picture. This machine here is called a micro ultra centrifuge. So we'll actually put DNA into tubes and we'll put them in here and we'll spin them at 140,000 times the force of gravity. What I'm doing is trying to understand the complexity of microbial life, but breaking that down using commonalities. Right here, human beings. Okay. Okay, that's a human. So if you had to guess where on this tree of life would be a palm tree, Oh. Where would you point? Well, over here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Right there. A palm tree. Yeah. Why? Why would it be there? Well, if you had to get, because I didn't draw every branch of the ah, tree of life. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. So there's, there's more than however, what is this, 50 branches? There's more than that many organisms on Earth, right? So I'm drawing these major groups, okay? So if you had to guess where a fungus would be. Well, <laughs> here. Now you know, now you know. Yeast would okay. be here okay. or maybe back here. Um, insects, flowers. When we think of the diversity of life, we, th we don't think anywhere no, no, no. close yes, to okay. the total diversity of life. The point you're making about diversity and how we think about it. Yeah, exactly. And all this unknown bit, you know, that yeah. nobody sees, in yeah. fact, right? If you think about yourself as a human, and you think about a dog, you both have eyes. And so that means that even though these are two evolutionarily distinct pathways of life, they have a common node if you go back far enough. If you think of that in an abstract way, I mean, we're all connected. It really helps us to understand where in space we could find life. Historically, our knowledge of microbiology is based on this sliver of the total diversity of life. Right. And it wasn't until DNA sequencing that we started to discover yep. all of this, this in, enormous majority unknown, of life that's unknown. You want to be really sober when you're looking at this. <laughs> Start to feel a little it's like wobbly. fireworks. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. no, but I mean, it's so colorful and so literally full of life. Exactly. So many times when I've peered through the microscope and seen these fluorescent signals, I'm thinking like, wow, this looks so much like photographs of outer space that I've seen, you know. Each of these uh, red, brightly fluorescing squiggles is um, a different type of bacteria, or maybe the same. Could be a diverse type, it could be the same. Then if we change it, to green, now we're looking at the archaea again, and you see many this more. is this, in the yeah. same sediments. This is many more archaea in that same hot spring. Yeah, it's a whole universe in a single drop. Exactly, right? mm -hmm. and, it, and it looks strangely similar to the universe. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, I wasn't going to say that. But, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> stop with the analogies. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Yes, it is. It does. Yeah. In that sort of caliber of detail, it's very easy to get lost from the big picture. There is this difference in my mind between alien microbial life and alien intelligent life. That's where it becomes 
a little dreamier because even if DNA-based life exists on some other planet, the evolutionary steps for larger life to exist, you know, higher organisms, multicellular consciousness, to me that's way out there. Or it's imaginable, but it's, it's, really, it's really fun to imagine. It's like, what would it be? What gives me a hunch that microbial life is very likely existing elsewhere is that just given the amount of different environments that are going to exist on other planets in our entire universe. I mean, it's gonna be more extreme, of course, but it's also gonna be less extreme environments. I mean, it's just overwhelmingly likely is the feeling I get from that, you know? <laughs>